Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. There is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the positive integers and the integers. Now, to start out the proof, we're going to define a function which we claim gives a one-to-one -one correspondence between these two sets. Now, just to give a visualization of what's going on with this function, check this out. Let's think of everything above our number line where the inputs go, and everything below the number line, the outputs, right? So if we consider the positive integer one, when we send one into the function f, well, one is odd, so f of one is one minus one over two, which is zero. So one gets assigned to zero. Similarly, if you send two into the function, two will get assigned to one. Three to negative one, and here is how the pattern will go. Just like that. So this gives you a visual idea of where this function comes from. But now we want to prove that this function f is a function from the positive integers to the integers. Right, because our claim is that for each positive integer we send into the function f, the output is an integer. We first need to prove that. So let's do that. And to verify this, what we're going to do is we're just going to show that for every positive integer i, f of i is an element of the integers. So we're trying to prove a statement about every positive integer. So give me an arbitrary positive integer. I'll call it i. And our whole goal from here is to deduce that f of i is an integer. Now, when we take i and send it into the function f, well, either i is even or i is odd. So we're going to split this up into two cases. Either i is even or i is odd. And what we're going to do is, in either case, we're going to show that f of i is an integer. Let's start with case one, where i is even. What does it mean for i to be even? Well, it means that there is some integer k such that i is equal to 2k. Now also, because i is even, when we send i into the function f, well, because i is even, f of i is assigned to i over 2. And since i is equal to 2k, we can replace i with 2k. And 2k over 2 simplifies to k. So we see that f of i is equal to k, which is an integer. So f of i is an integer. That's exactly what we wanted to show. So that covers the case where i is even. Now let's move on to the other case, where i is odd. Now, since i is odd, what this means is that there is some integer k such that i is equal to 2k plus 1. Also, since i is odd, when we send i into the function f, well, because i is odd, f of i will be assigned to 1 minus i over 2. We can substitute i with 2k plus 1. And when we distribute the minus sign across, this is just going to simplify to negative 2k over 2, which simplifies to negative k. And since k is an integer, we know that negative k is an integer. As a result, we see that f of i is an integer. So as you can see, in either case, we found that f of i is an integer. So putting this all together, we gave ourselves an arbitrary positive integer i, and we deduced that f of i must be an integer. So we have proven for all positive integers i, f of i is an integer. And that is how we know that f is a function from the positive integers to the integers. All right, so at this point, I'm just going to move back up to the top. Now, I placed an ellipses here just to indicate that there's more details that came before this in the proof. Okay, so now that we know f is a function from the positive integers to the integers, now we want to prove that f is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the positive integers and the integers. 
In other words, we want to show that f is a bijection. And to do that, we can prove that f is injective and surjective. Let's start by proving that f is injective. What does it mean for a function to be injective? Well, to say that f is injective, what that means is, is for every two elements, i and j, in this set, if their output values are equal, then their input values are equal. In other words, for every two elements, say, i and j, of the pos integers, if f of i is equal to f of j, then i is equal to j. So really, to prove that f is injective, all we gotta do is prove the statement. Now, we're trying to prove the statement about any two positive integers, so give me any two positive integers. I'll call them i and j. And our goal with these two arbitrary positive integers is to show if f of i equals f of j, then i is equal to j. So let's assume that f of i is equal to f of j. And now we want to show that i is equal to j. Now, since we expect i to equal j, what this means is, is we don't expect i to be even and j to be odd, and vice versa. So what we're going to do is we're going to first eliminate the possibility that i is even and j is odd. Now, because i is even, when we send i into the function f, we get that f of i is equal to i over 2. And f of i is equal to f of j. And since j is odd, when we send j into the function f, we get that f of j is equal to 1 minus j over 2. So we see that i over 2 is equal to 1 minus j over 2. Well, if we multiply 2 on both sides of this equation, we get i is equal to 1 minus j. And then adding j to the other side, we get i plus j is equal to 1. But wait a minute. i and j are positive integers. So this is absurd, right? In reality, i plus j is greater than 1. So because we've reached a contradiction, this eliminates the possibility that i is even and j is odd. A similar argument eliminates the possibility that i is odd and j is even. So we can't have that i is even and j is odd. We can't have that i is odd and j is even. So at this point, we're left with two possibilities. Either both i and j are even, or both i and j are odd. And in both cases, we're going to deduce that i is equal to j. Let's start with the case that both i and j are even. Now, since i is even, we know that f of i is equal to i over 2. And f of i is equal to f of j. And since j is even, we know that f of j is equal to j over 2. So since i over 2 is equal to j over 2, we can multiply 2 on both sides of the equation to obtain that i is equal to j. And that's exactly what we wanted to deduce. So this completes case one. Now let's move on to the other case where both i and j are odd. Well, since i is odd, it follows that f of i is equal to 1 minus i over 2. We know f of i is equal to f of j. And since j is odd, we know that f of j is equal to 1 minus j over 2. So we see that 1 minus i over 2 is equal to 1 minus j over 2. So we can multiply 2 on both sides of this equation to obtain 1 minus i is equal to 1 minus j. If we subtract 1 on both sides and then multiply negative 1 on both sides, we obtain that i is equal to j. And that's exactly what we want to deduce. So putting this all together, we gave ourselves two arbitrary positive integers, i and j, and assumed f of i is equal to f of j. From there, our whole goal was then to deduce that i is equal to j. And to do that, we eliminated the possibilities that i is even, j is odd, i is odd, and j is even. So that brought us down to only two possibilities, which is they're both even or they're both odd. But no matter which one of these is true, we see that i is equal to j, exactly what we wanted. So this proves this statement. So we know for a fact that f is injective. So now that we've shown f is injective, now we're going to show f is surjective.
So what does it mean for a function to be surjective? Well, to say that f is surjective, what that means is, is for every integer b, there is a positive integer a such that f of a is equal to b. So to prove that f is surjective, this is really what we want to prove. And we're trying to prove a statement about every integer, so give me an arbitrary integer. I'll call it b. And our whole goal now is to find a positive integer, a, such that f of a is equal to b. And so we're going to break this up into two cases. Either b is greater than 0, or b is less than or equal to 0. And what we're going to do is we're going to prove in either case, there is a positive integer a such that f of a is equal to b. So let's start with case one where b is greater than zero. Now, in this case, observe that 2b is an even positive integer. Of course, this makes sense because, well, since b is an integer, 2 times b is an integer. Since b is greater than zero, we multiply 2 on both sides, well, 2b is also greater than zero. So 2b is an integer greater than zero, and hence 2b is a positive integer. And also, 2b is even because 2b is equal to 2 times some integer. So that's how we know for a fact that this is true. But now, if we send 2b into the function f, well, since 2b is even, it follows that f of 2b is equal to 2b over 2. 2b over 2 simplifies to b. So as you can see, there is a positive integer a such that f of a equals b, namely 2b, because f of 2b is equal to b. So there is a positive integer that satisfies this condition. So this completes case one. Now we're going to move on to case two and prove the same thing. Now in this case, observe that 2 times negative b plus 1 is an odd positive integer. Right? And this makes sense, because since b is an integer, we know the negative of b is an integer, and therefore 2 times that is an integer, and then that plus 1 is also an integer. So of course, this is an integer. But it's also positive, because, well, since b is less than or equal to 0, we know that the negative of b is greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, 2 times the negative b is greater than or equal to 0, and therefore 2 times the negative b plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 and hence it's positive. So yes, this is in fact a positive integer. But it's also an odd integer, because it's equal to 2 times some integer plus 1. And that's it. So we know for a fact that this is true. But since this is an odd positive integer, when we send it into the function f, we have that f of this value is equal to 1 minus this value over 2. Now, if you simplify the numerator, you're going to get 2b. It simplifies to b. So again, there is a positive integer a such that f of a is equal to b, namely 2 times the negative b plus 1, because we see that f of that is equal to b. So yeah, there is a positive integer that satisfies this condition. So this completes the other case. So putting this all together, we give ourselves an arbitrary integer b, and we show that no matter which one of these is true, this is true. So for all integers b, this is true. So this proves that f is surjective. So we've proven that f is both injective and surjective, and what that means is that f gives a one-to-one -one correspondence between these two sets. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much one way in which you could prove this theorem. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.